Hey, what's up you guys? John here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a mentor of mine. His name is Kirk Kikorian. I mean, he didn't mentor me one-on-one, -on -one, I wish. He mentored me through his accomplishments, through uh, books, just through what he's done and his reputation. His house is in Beverly Hills. It's right behind the Beverly Hills Hotel and my office is about four blocks away. And everyone used to talk about him until he passed away in 2015. Talk about, he was such a unique character. He would drive around the city in a beat up old Jeep. He lived in an incredible mansion and he was just very under the radar, but his accomplishments were mind blowing. So in this video, I'm going to pretty much highlight everything I've learned from him because I'm fascinated with self-made multi-billionaires, people that started out with nothing because I feel like you can learn a lot from them. So I'm going to pretty much share everything that I learned about Kirk here in this video. That being said, smash that like button, comment and uh, subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, let me know and I'll personally welcome you to the channel. I'm going to tell the story of Kirk Kikorian. This self-made billionaire began his life in 1917, about as far removed from possible of people on the Forbes 400 list. He was four years old when he and his Armenian immigrant parents were evicted from their family debt-ridden farm near a place in San Quentin Valley. Running out of landlords would become a familiar pattern for himself and his family as the Great Depression, 1929 Great Depression, came soon after. He was usually the new kid fending off bullies and getting into tons of fist fights, defending himself. Uh, he was constantly picked on as a child. And what made things even worse was that he didn't speak the language, he didn't speak English. It wasn't his first language. So he picked it up on the streets of Los Angeles with a broken accent. And his formal education ended up with the eighth grade in school. And he became the problem kid. And then he started hanging out with the problem kids. Uh, he helped support his struggling family as a teen by clearing brush in the Sierras with the Civilian Conservation Corps. And then, as an amateur a boxer known as Rifle Right Kikorian, he intended to go pro, but discovered his love for flying and aviation. He was a daring aviator during World War II and earned his first fortune after the war operating a small charter service and flying junkets to Las Vegas. He was in his mid-40s his mid-40s before he broke into the ranks of becoming a millionaire. Think about that, mid-40s. I know today on social media, uh, everyone thinks that you become successful and rich right out of the gate, and that's why I think everyone's looking for quick, instant gratification, quick secrets to growing wealth. But if you look at a lot of the billionaires, you look at them, most of them accumulated their wealth after learning and going through a series of failures and ultimately building out the system and foundation to deserve the success that they have. Now, he built the world's biggest hotels three different times. He made Elvis Presley a Vegas icon and rolled Wall Street in headline-making business deals with Ted Turner, Lee Iacocca, Steve Wynn, Michael Milken, all billionaires. One of his best friends was actor and business associate Cary Grant. He is very, very unlikely. He's the unlikely tale of a scrappy kid, scrappy fighter from humble beginnings who gambled with pennies and bottle caps as to someone owning one of the world's richest casinos. He sneaked into movie theaters with his friends and ended up becoming a movie mogul. You just think about how amazing that is. Uh, he studied car repair in junior high school class, and uh, he tried to buy three U.S. automakers. Uh, he's um, he had he developed the reputation of being called the Cobra because he was just so aggressive, and he was just a smart investor, and he was always just looking for that killer deal, that next big landmark deal that was going to set him apart from everyone else. Uh, he grew up hearing tales of suffering and oppression from felon, fellow Armenians only to be proclaimed as a national hero and honorary citizen. And at the height of his wealth, he was worth about $20 billion. $20 billion. 
He gave away hundreds of millions of dollars without fanfare or personal credit. Uh, he would not put his names on buildings. Uh, he did not want the um, the notoriety, that respect level, to where people saw him as a big contributor. He was the one that would donate uh, anonymously, and that's that's very respectable. It's very rare today. Everyone wants to be a helpful Honda person and make it very notable, or you know, everyone's just trying to get credit. Everyone's trying to get credit, and it's rare to have, to see someone at his status trying to receive zero credit. Uh, he rejected requests for names on buildings. Like they would offer and reach out to him, and he would reject it. He died in 2015. He was almost 100 years old. He was 98 years old, and he left an estate of about two billion. He gave nearly all of it, with the exception of a few million, to charity. So what what a tremendous rags to riches story and just someone I think that we could all learn something from. The 10 life lessons that I've learned from studying and reading about Kirk. Uh, number one is live life to the fullest. You know, there's no way that he could have accomplished everything that he did if he didn't live life to the fullest. Steve Wynn, chairman and CEO of Wynn Resorts, said about him over the years we did deals together and enjoyed life he was a man who lived every day to the fullest and although we will miss him we know that kirk in his time did not miss a thing um number two the benefits of others some say kirk was untrustworthy uh, he was sued on multiple occasions and even had to settle some matters out of court. However, there were many others who saw him as a sure bet. He helped a lot of people make money with great business deals. If you want to leave a lasting legacy, you have to benefit others in some way. So the same thing goes with real estate investing. If you don't have that much money right now, you need to figure out how you're going to benefit others. You can leverage relationships, leverage your knowledge, uh, you need leverage. You need to leverage yourself in some way, shape, or form responsibly and in the best interest of your investors to uh, lay a solid foundation and put yourself in a position to become independent like Kirk. Number three is diversify your income when the timing is right. So he is known as an investor in film studios as well as casinos and real estate. You know, we've all heard the importance of uh, diversification. But there's definitely something to be said for timing. Getting involved in too many ventures too early can derail your focus. Uh, he was obviously ambitious, but he knew when to strike a deal, just like my friend who didn't buy that property in Orange County for $18 million, that hotel. Uh, he knew when was the right time to strike that deal and what to pay for it. And that's what's ultimately going to separate the smart investor from the, um, from the one that learns that hard lesson. Number three is work hard. You know, Kikorian, he was an industrious guy at a very young age, like I said, you know, a few minutes earlier. He was selling newspapers and working odd jobs when he was only nine years old. And he didn't shy away from hard work. He didn't look for the get rich quick scheme. Uh, in the early days, he wanted to help his family earn enough money to make a difference, to pay rent. He didn't want to have to run away from landlords. And he never forgot where he came from. He tipped well, and he kept on giving back after earning his fortune. Number four is make your own decisions. Become independent. Whether it was dropping out of school at an early age, you know, he only had an eighth grade education, or staying out of the spotlight and living a low-key life, Kirk was his own man, his own individual, and he made up his mind about what he wanted to do with his life person doesn't become wealthy without being sure of who they are and what they want, really what they want to achieve out of life. And don't let other people tell you what to do. You know, my family had their own impressions of who I should be, what I should do when I was very early on. And I'm very grateful today that, uh, that I did not take that advice. Number five is do what you love. Kirk loved working. At age 52, he was already worth a quarter of a billion dollars. He had more than enough money to retire. But he thought that, you know, it wouldn't make for a very interesting life if he stopped at 52 and 
just sat and just waited for uh, for his retirement, for his death. And so he just kept working and pursuing what he loved. And if you like to work, then why not keep working? If you don't like to work, that means that you're likely doing something that you probably shouldn't be doing. And retirement is not an age. It's a dollar value. However, Kikorian didn't see any point. He just didn't see any point in retiring. He worked until his final days. Number six is hire good people and delegate. Billionaires never get to the billionaire status working alone. So you don't see billionaires cutting their grass and billionaires going doing food shopping. They know the value of their time and they delegate tasks to other people that can fulfill those tasks at a much lower cost per hour. He knows his value. And good people stretch their thinking and challenge their mentality. And by doing that, they hire very smart people for certain jobs. And Kirk was very skilled at finding good people and hiring them to do the work he required of them. Um, Richard Branson had a good quote. He said, find great people and pay them what they're worth. Don't nickel and dime people. Although it can be hard to find good people, the effort is well worth it. And work with those that you can trust because they'll do right by you. Number seven is you want to seize opportunities. Sometimes timing is everything. And like I mentioned, this upcoming recession, we are going to have such a great opportunity to buy undervalued real estate, one that we've never seen before in our lifetimes. Think about it. We had the longest economic expansion in U.S. history, coupled by a virus that swept the world. And now we're stepping into elections with a ton of problems um, throughout the entire world. So there's so much uncertainty, and with uncertainty comes fear, and with fear comes change. So I believe we're going to see a huge opportunity to make a tremendous fortune. And Kirk said, big risk have a big payoff. And he was known to take big risk. Using his wealth, he struck up many deals, having no idea whether or not they'd ever work out. Surprisingly, many of them did. Although there's no question that he had his fair share of losses, he never took any of them. Uh, to heart. He probably wouldn't have become a billionaire if he dwelled over every single loss that he took. If you want great rewards, you need to take big risk. So first risk, the biggest risk you could take is diving into something that you don't understand. And so you do not want to take unnecessary risk. You want to know as much as you possibly can and tilt the odds in your favor. Tilt them greatly in your favor. If you think there's a high probability of you taking a loss, then take a step back and reevaluate, learn, study, and reassess. And it's never too early to start working. Uh, he came from a very troubled background, dropped out of school, as I mentioned, in eighth grade, um, became a boxer at a young age, mainly out of just self defense. And he started selling, as I mentioned again, newspapers at nine years old. I had a lemonade stand when I was young. I sold candy. I did everything I could possibly do to drum up cash. And I think that's ultimately the mindset you need to have when you step into a recession is you need to drum up as much cash as possible. And you need to make sure you're utilizing every single dollar in the smartest fashion to seize the right investment. And that's what he did. He invested very wisely and he took a, an ambitious aggressive approach towards investing and towards his future and that's exactly what you're going to do here as you gain more confidence knowledge and background on real estate real estate investing appraisals uh, you understand inspections you know what types of properties to buy and how much to pay for them and you understand how to scale from one property to the second to the third and with all this information coupled with good credit and either a good business partner or your own funds is going to lead to you building a tremendous fortune on the backs of undervalued assets as we step into this, what I believe, again, is going to be one of the greatest opportunities to buy real estate in our lifetime. I personally am fascinated with self-made multi-billionaires, especially billionaires that made their money in real estate and investing. You know, we've all read and studied and learned about Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett and a lot of these top billionaires in the spotlight like Ray Dalio and, and more. But I feel like these self-made multi-billionaires, ones that started out with nothing, have the most to teach us. That being said, I'm gonna make a billionaire's playlist at the bottom of this page here. 
feel free to roam around there. And depending on what level you're at, if you're in really in the beginner stage with real estate investing, I have a free real estate mini course below that I definitely recommend you explore so much great content for the beginner. And also, if you have any questions about anything in my videos, just drop it in the comments and I will respond. I respond every day to everybody. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to smash that like button. If you're a new subscriber, let me know and I'll personally welcome you to the channel. All right, until next time.